washers and dryers really haven't changed much over the past few decades. In fact, if you even go back through the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, the looks may have changed, but the actual work of what they did really hasn't. The honest truth is that even though panels have changed quite a bit, the reality is that most units aren't much different than that old 1953 White Westinghouse I have at my shop. Now, GE has introduced a very radical washing and dryer system, and even though combo units are not that new to the market, what this one does is it combines a high capacity, low wash time unit in a two in one combo. Most units like this take three hours to operate and this one claims that it will take two. But is that true? Well, today we're going to separate fact from fiction on this GE combo washing and drying unit to see if it's really true or not and evaluate some of the other claims that GE has made. Now, I want you to know I bought this machine brand new from Lowe's. I spent all my own money on it. This video is not sponsored by General Electric or anyone else. If you decide that this machine is in fact worth it to you, I would beg you to please use the links that are in the description as well as the product tag so I can make a few dollars off of all the loss that I'm going to have from this. Because at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm going to even want the machine myself. So let's get to it and see what all this machine is about. For this test, I have a few clothes that I am messing up and dirtying for the test. For these shorts, this is the Taco Bell test. Next, there's a shirt with some coffee stains around the neck and then a ketchup stain in the same area on this next shirt. Finally, here's another shirt with a good bit of dirt and gravel that we're rubbing into it. And these are the four shirts that we're going to test in the load of clothes. But along with that, we're going to add quite a bit of other clothes and towels to the load to make up exactly 10 pounds of laundry. Because at this point, you probably didn't notice when I was talking at the beginning of the video, there's some fine print at the very bottom of that nice label on the front. The two hour claimed wash and dry time is only for a 10 pound load of clothes, so you can't fill it up all the way. With almost 10 pounds of clothes here, Let's go ahead and load them into the machine. This is what 10 pounds of clothes looks like for reference in the drum. I would say it's about half full, maybe a little bit more, I think. The interface has a number of incredible options on it, and it's very easy to use. You can customize any selection on the unit that you wish, as well as pressing the wash or dry button, which will strike out one of the modes. So you can either do only wash or only dry functions. It, it has a lot of different things that you can do on this. Essentially any mode you would like, it's going to be on the screen. However, I was never able to find a true two hour cycle on this machine, which they claimed. So I forced it into a timed dry with a 45 minute dry cycle as the sensor dry ran for about two hours and 20 minutes based on the interface. Once I added some Tide Pods and with a little bit more tinkering, we got it to two hours and six minutes for this test. The operation of this unit's washing process is pretty much normal and what you would expect on any other machine. There's nothing really special when it runs in the wash mode, which took about an hour or a little bit over it. The magic really happens though, I think is in the drying process because that's what makes this machine work better than any other. It dries faster than any other claimed machine on the market. Just before the two hour mark was done, the unit begins a cooldown cycle exactly as timed and it ran just for over two hours when we start to get the clothes out. So we're at the end of the cycle. I have not opened this machine up ever. This is the first time opening it after a heat pump dryer cycle. Two minutes on normal load. We use the time dry on it. So I have no idea how this washed or dried. Let's open it up and see what's happened here. Quite a bit of moisture inside. And the clothes are a little damp, but you know, just very, very, very slightly damp. I would say if I was going to guess how moist these are, I would say maybe like 2% of what they should be normally. And they're still warm. I would say I'm pretty happy with this. Let Now let's go to the actual clothes and see what happened with the cleanliness on them. So before this one was spotless, this one had our Taco Bell accident. And there, it, you cannot tell that this uh, suffered from a little bit of late night Taco Bell. Another perfect one. And I got to say, some of these, the, the lighter garments like these t-shirts are absolutely perfectly dry. Uh, that's one thing I'm noticing with the dryness at the two hour mark. The shirts are perfect. 
The towels have a little bit of moistness left in them. These are very, very heavy. Uh, those could have gone just a little bit longer, but if you were using a lighter load, no towels, nothing super heavy, uh, they would be perfect. These shirts, uh, that wasn't part of the video, but it's perfectly dry. This was the shirt we rubbed a ton of dirt in and it is flawless. The wash cycle is immaculate on this and I am very, very impressed. And again, for the most part, all the light articles bone dry. The heavier articles, just a little bit of dampness, but uh, I would say overall, the dry factor is probably about a nine out of 10. If we'd used the sensor dry, that would have went a little bit longer. I think that the moisture level would have been perfect. And I would judge the claim for GE almost entirely true on the moisture setting. But again, we use just under a 10 pound load, which is what GE suggested, but I use the time dry instead of the sense dry. And another big thing here is that we only used 1.08 kilowatts of electricity. That is not a lot compared to what you would use in a standard consumer washer and dryer set. A standard washing machine, we use about 200 watts of electricity during a normal cycle, and we saw that on the Whirlpool top load we tested a few months ago, but the drying wattage is going to be where it's really, really bad. And this model saves a lot of electricity with its heat pump, which is amazing, so I, I think this worked well. But let's go ahead and start with the teardown on this to show you a lot of what really makes this dryer up and why it worked. And this is where things are going to get interesting. I'll have a video soon describing how to maintain this unit as well. So if you want to buy this machine, you want to look for that because there is some things that you specifically want to do to take this care of this machine and keep it running for a long time. Disassembling the unit was not that hard, but it was a daunting task given that only a few people have probably taken this apart before and I don't think any other reviewer has, but it's very important that I think we take this apart to show you what's hiding behind everything. So the difference between this review and every other is going to be that no one else is probably going to get to this point and show you why this washing machine works the way it does. Underneath this are some coils and with the compressor here, you can find out what really makes this work. This is essentially a dehumidifier that is packaged inside this washing machine uh, which works as a heat pump. It exchanges hot and cold air, which will dry your clothes and rip the moisture out of the air, allowing it to work as it does by simply just using the drain hose to take the moisture out instead of a large venting hose. This has a lot of benefits, also some problems with it as well. The first thing to note is that by adding this compressor, it is vastly more efficient than a standard electric dryer is going to be and it's why this unit beats out anything else on the market. Essentially, you're using one watt of electricity to both heat up the clothes in your dryer to pull the moisture out and then condense the moist air on this side and drain the water out. When we ran this test, we only saw at maximum this unit pull about 850 watts of electricity at peak. This is vastly lower than a standard tumble dryer would use, Typically on, say, a Samsung or a Whirlpool, you're going to see anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 watts at peak usage. That means that when this runs just for an hour, it's using a fraction of the electricity, although the drying times are certainly longer. In total, this unit used only 1.1 kilowatts of electricity between the wash cycle and the drying cycle. On a standard washing machine with a standard drying time, you're going to use anywhere from two and a half to about three kilowatts of electricity to accomplish the same task, meaning this machine is vastly more efficient. Over the course of five years, you're probably going to save somewhere between 800 and 1,000 kilowatts of electricity versus a standard unit, which means you do save quite a bit of money. Now, having said this, there are disadvantages with this, and we need to be totally honest about the problems. The problem is that it is a heat pump or a dehumidifier and the challenge is that unless you clean this machine properly, it's going to struggle to dry, just like if you had a ton of lint in the blower of a standard dryer. Failure to maintain this is going to cost you a lot of problems because the airflow will not occur between the hot and cold sides, which means that it's not going to pull the moisture out and then drop it into the condenser. GE suggests that you clean out the filter about every four to five loads of clothes. You also have the foam filter on the other side that GE recommends that you clean out about every 50 loads of clothes, which is easily removable and easily done, but it does take some maintenance. 
So it is a little bit more maintenance intensive and failure to do that is going to cost you, well, the machine. And I predict that this is going to be a issue of contention with some people. We've seen people uh, complain about drying times on this already. It totally passed our test here, but that's because it was clean and everything was good. I suspect people that fail to clean their machines are going to complain about this issue. Another issue with this is that you have added a very complex interaction to your washing machine. You've added a dehumidifier or a refrigerator to your unit, and it now has reliability issues involving this sealed system, which can get very expensive. Now, there is some good news, really good news on this unit from a technical perspective. This unit is entirely swappable. The compressor, the condenser, evaporator, and blower system all can lift out as one standard package. It is not mated to the washing machine, which means if it ever fails, you can just simply take it out and drop a new one in. And this is absolutely revolutionary for any technician or DIYer at home. You can actually fix this yourself, which I couldn't say about any other product on the market. And GE deserves all the applause for doing this. Additionally, the sealed system here has a five-year warranty on it if it has issues, which is a really, really good thing. You have one-year part warranty on everything else and a 10-year warranty on the motor. Not like that matters, but the five-year sealed system warranty is a godsend. Also for tech geeks, this is a R134A unit, not an R600. So if by some reason you did have to noodle with it, it uses the standard refrigerant that most modern cars do, which would make it easy. But again, you can actually replace the sealed system on this as a package, which is awesome. Now with all the drying aspects discussed, which are really the thing that matters, I think, on this particular machine, let's talk a little bit about the washer. Now that we have the interface off, the rest of this machine actually just disassembles like a GFW 550 or 650. And of course, I have a few videos on those, so taking the rest of this machine off is pretty straightforward and easy. But the washer itself is a pretty darn good machine. I have videos on it, so I know what goes wrong on these types of machines from all the comments, which, you know, we've had a few thousand comments, I think, on the GEs. The areas of concern on this type of similar washing machine is the interface, the control board, and then at a lesser extent, the inverter motor for the washing machine, and then finally the drain pump, with the control board definitely being the number one concern. Fortunately, it's not very expensive to replace, and I have to say that the form, fit, and finish of this washing machine, tearing it down to this point, it's very well built. Now, full disclosure, this is in fact made in China, but then again, what isn't? So let's go ahead and put this back together and do some more tests. Putting it back together was pretty easy without too many issues. But if you ever have to noodle with this unit and get to this point, make sure to get some push mount cable ties. GE liked to use a lot of them in this machine to secure wires in place. For the next test, we're going to do an 18 pound load of clothes, which is the max capacity of this machine at 4.8 cubic feet. That is the suggested maximum load, and I definitely would not go over 18 pounds. As you can see, it's totally filled the drum up for certain. Additionally, I've installed water flow meters in between the first wash and now the second wash to gauge on the unit how much water they use during the cycle just to see how much water it consumes. This is a massive load of clothes, so I'm going to use the more dry option with more water as well, which increases the amount of time used on the unit, and we are doing the sensor dry so it could run longer. Before doing the video, I had a lot of commenters ask about the GE Smart HQ system. It is a pretty interesting system, uh, when you have it installed on your cell phone, you get a few options which informs you about which options you've selected when it runs. It lets you change the water and dry options on the fly even if the machine's running, as well as push notifications to your phone telling you that your load of clothes are done, either just the wash or the wash and dry cycle. It also lets you download a custom cycle to the unit on the interface, which if you see here where it says download, this will give you four extra options that are not normally available on your machine. But after playing with the GE Smart HQ for a while, I found out that it does not let you custom make your own option or really customize the soil time and load settings, which I really did not like. I thought with you being able to download some options that it would give you more choices that you could in fact program yourself. But at any rate, with the washing machine on the second load of clothes, the wash cycle ran really well. At just under an hour into the wash cycle, here's the water usage so far, about 10 gallons between the hot and cold settings. And as it ran, I continued to watch it, and the problem with the second load was that it ran, 
and ran and ran and ran some more. During the second dry, the sensor kept detecting the load that it really wasn't done, which is a good thing because we didn't want to pull the clothes out wet and it did have a rather high electric usage for this second load. In the end, I think the total runtime for this 18 pound load of clothes with all the options was about four hours and 30 minutes until the cool off was finally done. What I'm really interested in, uh, definitely hot. The one thing that I wanna mention about this, not that you can see it, and I don't have one of my thermostats, is these clothes are hot. This is about as warm as you're going to get clothes out of a standard tumble dryer. These are piping hot, to be honest. Uh, almost as hot as my wife, actually. So here, the, here's what I'm really concerned about is the bedding right here. Of course, everything else is gonna come out. And it is, I would say, it, there's probably a little bit of moisture on this gigantic blanket, uh, but very, very minimal. Uh, m even more well done than the first load that we did with the towels. This is probably like 99.5% dry. Maybe it's maybe it's fully dry. I just, I don't know enough clothes. But everything's coming out so far really, really well. But I gotta take this home and see what the real boss thinks about this washing machine and get some feedback. Now that we've ran this twice, tore it down, and done a lot of other research and analysis on this, finally, should you buy this machine? And the answer is, I think that this is a great machine to buy. Probably the best combo washer and dryer that has ever existed on the market. However, it's still a combo unit. Now, the one issue that I think is a drawback is definitely this filter here, which is just the nature of this type of machine. This filter was very dirty between the first load of clothes, which I expected, and even the second one. I predict this is going to be a major problem for people that are simply wanting to load their washing machine and forget it. If you forget cleaning this filter, you are going to run into problems. Is the maintenance very hard on this? Absolutely not. But if you're just wanting a machine that is just going to keep running and running without issues, that's not this machine. You are buying a washer with a dryer with a dehumidifier and you have the maintenance of all three. And if you've watched any of my videos on refrigerators, you know that maintaining your refrigerator's evaporator coils or condenser coils is really, really important. And failure to do that on this machine is going to have a lot of problems. But if you can do the maintenance, I think this is a fantastic machine. I really have to say that this the heat pump design on this is about the best that you could have expected on the market. Uh, they've built this logically. They've built it, I think, robustly. Again, if you've watched my refrigerator videos, I think GE has the best sealed systems on the market for refrigerators. Can't say for certain if it translates over to washing machines, but I think that there's a high likelihood that it should last for quite some time. Now, let's say you are wanting other suggestions on combo units. I still like LG machines. They're probably even more reliable because they don't have the heat pump, but the wash and dry times are going to be far in excess of this one, which was a little bit over four hours for the 18 pounds of clothes, which wasn't great, but it still did the job admirably. I would also say don't throw out your standard washer or dryer set. If you can have the room for a GE GFW 550, with the washer and dryer set stacked or side by side, I think it is going to be a better option overall. You can do two loads of clothes at once and it is going to be a fraction of the price. Or an LG wash tower if you have to have one piece stacked together. Both of those two I like quite a bit. I paid $2,500 for this machine, I own it outright. I think that's a little bit overpriced for what it is, but you are getting what you pay for in the fact that you're getting that heat pump up top. Make sure to ask a ton of questions about this machine. I'm going to be running it and doing more reviews on it for quite some time, including a full teardown of the unit. And make sure if you do decide to buy the machine, I got to pay for it somehow. Use the links in the description. Have a great day.